Hello Project Zomboid community, thank you for showing interest in this video. I decided to make this video as I saw a lot of people wanting to use guns but having a difficult time using them as our characters miss a lot if we don't level up our aiming. In this video, I will show you how to level up your aiming to level 6 or even level 7 within the first 3 or 4 days. This isn't a speedrun, hence why the video is a bit lengthy, as I will give step by step instructions and even give what if scenarios in case you aren't having the best start or things aren't going according to plan. Let's start off by laying out the plan on the map. You want to start off in West Point. Although this is a difficult starting city as it's one of the most zombie infested cities in the map, in my opinion it's the best for this purpose as it has both the gun shop and is also very close to the shooting range in Valley Station which both give you a tons of guns and ammo. The line in the middle gives you direction of what to do first. If you spawn to the northwest side of the line you want to go to the school. The reason being is you find a lot of hiking backpacks and big hiking backpacks in the lockers. There's also a good chance you will find cigarettes and a lighter, which is helpful as smoker is one of the traits I run with my character, but I will go over profession and traits later. Storage room inside the school has good melee weapons. There are also a few parking lots which I highlighted for you where you can check for a car, and lastly there is a sweet shop which has some good fresh fruit. If you spawn southeast of the line, then you want to prioritize finding a vehicle and getting to the gas station on the south part of the city. Don't worry about not going to the school for the backpack. There are a few places later on where you can find a good backpack. Plus, your car has a lot of storage in it where you can even fill up garbage bags, sacks, plastic bags, tote bags, really any one of the small containers and just put them in the seat of your vehicle. You'll want to find one of the quieter cars, the Chevalier Dart or the Masterson Horizon. Just remember to check the mechanics and make sure the engine and muffler are in good condition or they will still make a lot of noise. I'll explain later why you want your vehicles to be as quiet as possible. There is also a gas station in the middle of the city, but most of the time there are a bunch of zombies around it, so it's hard to get a gas can from it. If it isn't fully surrounded by zombies, then feel free to check it and grab a gas can. The gas station in the south is usually safer and right next to the large warehouse. In the large warehouse, you can find a sledgehammer, which we will need to get into the gun shop. The warehouse also has some lockers, and sometimes you can find a backpack in those lockers as well, or even a gun. If you aren't able to find a sledgehammer at the large warehouse, don't worry. There is another warehouse in Valley Station that you can check. Here is the map on how to get there. Feel free to pause if you have to take a closer look. If you still haven't found the sledgehammer after checking both warehouses, stick around and I'll go into full detail of a few other places on where you can find it. After you find the sledgehammer, you can destroy the metal guard gates at the gun shop in the north part of town and loot all the ammo and guns in that shop. Just remember to loot carefully, as you may have attracted some zombies behind the shop when you tore down the metal gates. Speaking of being safe, I've highlighted this bridge because it's a good stopping point to rest up and sleep after you find your car. Even if you can't get to the gun shop on the first day, this bridge is really close to it so you won't be wasting a lot of time. If you end up going to the school on the first day, you will rarely have enough time to loot the gun shop in the first day. Always remember to park your car with the window blocked off by the bridge. Zombies almost never come to this bridge but you would rather be safe than sorry. After you slept in your car on the bridge, you want to drive to the shooting range in Valley Station. This is where the quiet vehicle comes into play. As you're driving up to the shooting range, if you brought a loud vehicle, you will attract all the nearby zombies towards you. There isn't a safe area where you can kill all the zombies, so you want to attract the least amount of zombies as possible. If you're having a hard time finding a quiet car in West Point, you can park your car here and then walk towards the shooting range. When you manage to get inside the shooting range, you may want to check the lockers first if you don't already have a couple of good packs. Then loot the main area where all the guns and ammo are in. Lastly, there is a small shelf on the outside where there might be a box of ammo or two, but don't stress if you can't loot it if more zombies are making it too difficult for you. At this point, it should be close towards the end of the second or third day where your character will need to sleep again. Head to the storage area north of the shooting range. Clear the zombies inside the metal fences and you can rest on one of the seats inside the office or even one of the storage units if you are lucky and had one of them open that has a couch inside. Even though you cleared the zombies inside the metal fences, always close your door as a zombie may break out of one of the other storage areas and get you while you're sleeping. The academy across the road from the storage area is another good place to check for backpacks. It also has a teacher's lounge which has a couch in it and some food in case you're running a little bit low on food or again need another place to rest. Sometimes it may be a little bit difficult to clear the zombies inside the metal fences, so I always use the second warehouse that we were talking about earlier as another place to sleep in. In the second floor, there's a couple of chairs where you can sleep. In my walkthrough, I'll go a couple of different strategies on how to clear the zombies inside. We gotta remember that our aiming skill is not very high level yet, and this is the first time we're gonna be using guns, so we want to do it as carefully as possible. So stick around for that, and I will show you later on in full detail on how to clear the zombies inside the metal fences with your guns. 
After you're done killing all the zombies inside the metal fences, you can now freely shoot at the zombies outside. Here's where you can level up your aiming all the way up to level 6 or level 7 depending on how many shotgun shells you manage to find. I will never have less than 7 or 8 boxes of shotgun shells which is more than enough to get your aiming all the way to level 6. Moving on to the occupation, I take police officer over veteran as it gives you one extra point in aiming and it also adds 25 extra percent experience when you're killing zombies with guns and it helps level up your aiming really really fast. The difference in points between police officer and veteran is 4, which allows you to pick brave. Although you do lose the desensitize, which allows you to never be scared of the zombies, brave is a good replacement for that. I would rather take the one extra point in shooting over being desensitized. The most important trait to take when shooting is keen hearing, as it gives you a wider circle behind you. And that's very important because you don't want a zombie sneaking up behind you as you're shooting another one in front of you. I also take strong to give me more ability to carry more items. When you have a double holster and you're putting two guns in it, your weight starts to increase a lot. And then you're not able to carry as many items with you. The last two positive traits that I take are dexterous and fast learner. The reason I take dexterous is to loot really quickly. When you go into a house and you shoot down some zombies inside, you will be attracting more zombies. So you want to shoot down the zombies really quick outside, go inside, grab your loot really quick, and then get out. Fast Learner obviously helps us level up aiming even faster, and it also helps us level up all everything else in the game as quickly as well. Moving forward, I will do a voiceover of what's going on in my game, so I do apologize ahead of time for the ums and ums if I do have, end up having a whole lot. If you guys noticed, there was actually a construction truck right outside the school, and it had a sledgehammer right by it. So I got a bit lucky when getting that sledgehammer, but even most of the time when I do these run-throughs, I do end up finding the sledgehammer, if not in the first warehouse in the second warehouse like 80 percent of the time and even if you don't find it if, if you come across that time uh, where it's like the 20 percent of the time where you don't find the sledgehammer in either warehouse you also still do have the mall which has a warehouse in it although the mall could be a little bit dangerous it's just another option but like i said you rarely should come across that when when trying to do this run through of not being able to find the sledgehammer you also do have the warehouse store in downtown uh west point that can give you a sledgehammer as well as you're driving around the streets or all the way up to uh the objectives that you had before like i said the the gun shop the or the shooting range like i said as you're driving all over to these locations you may spot an, a construction truck as well and may have a sledgehammer right next to it so just keep a close out for that and like i said most of the time you you shouldn't have a problem finding it another thing i wanted to point it out already in this walkthrough is when i looted inside the school i found two big hiking backpacks and four hiking backpacks this may seem uncommon but in this school in west point it's actually pretty common about 95 percent of the time i ended up I end up coming up with a big hiking backpack and a regular hiking backpack at least. You know, a lot of the times I even find a lot more stuff than that. Like the bare minimum that I find is one big hiking backpack and a regular hiking backpack. Like 95% of the time. So that's like 1 out of 20 times that I don't get both. And I think the, the one time that it did actually end up not happening to me, I even took Lucky, which was weird. Which I would have thought that Lucky would have made it so that I actually found even more of them. But it's pretty common to, to find a lot more than, than, than just those two that you're carrying on your back. And even, even if you want to grab some duffel bags too, or you're in it, I ended up leaving the duffel bags because I did get the extra regular four hiking backpacks. Here I take a quick break inside a house as I was walking through a bush and the bush ended up cutting me. So I needed to clean my bandages and uh, repatch myself up. My bandage ended up getting quick, uh, dirty quick again. So, but we're just mainly walking from the zombies. We already completed our first objectives as, as I was going earlier in the walkthrough. You want to start off at the school, which we already did. We don't want to be spending too much time grabbing all these books or doing all these other objectives because that just delays us from having to, uh, from being able to get level six or level seven within those three or four days. You can make that a priority to go for books or to get the fresh fruit on the on the sweet shop that's across the school and even time it a little bit better so when the helicopter comes it actually even draws more zombies there was one run through where i 
actually was very short of getting even to level 7. And the reason I didn't get to level 7 is because I ran out of zombies to kill outside the storage area. So you can even plan this a little bit more if you don't want to rush, you know, the first three or four days. You can even, you know, find a little house that's pretty secure and watch some of the shows that give you experience, like the carpentry shows on the live and, and TV's channel too. So you, you you can take a little bit more time, do it a little bit more slowly and get a little, a little bit better, better result. This is, I just kind of wanted to show you how quickly you can get to level six or level seven and start having funs, fun with the guns a little bit earlier too. But it, it might not be a bad idea to take it a little bit slower and it may work to your great, great benefit to, you know, grab those books, to gain that experience from the, shows you're watching to time it so when the helicopter comes obviously you don't know exactly when the helicopter comes but if you're taking about a, like a day or two to kill all zombies from all the shotgun shells you collected if you're at the storage area around like six and a half days you're giving yourself a good chance for the helicopter to come in while you're still in there and that also gives you time to loot food so you're not um starving or, or having a little bit of trouble i started running a, a little bit out of food as I was shooting the zombies inside, I, I barely had enough to make it to the to the next location and start grabbing some more food. So you take you can't take it a little bit slower and plan it out a little bit more accordingly. Um, here, as I said, the next thing we do after the school is prioritize the gas station because we want to grab a gas can and fill up a, a, a gas as well. We use the windows a lot to kill the zombies all around. It's like I said, sometimes it's not very populated. This time it did end up being a, a bit populated, but the zombies will break the windows for you so you're not making extra noise and attracting more zombies. And then we just, you know, remove the broken glass, jump through the window, and then the, fall, the zombies will follow you in. You can cut them all around, that sort of thing. Here it's starting to get a little bit late at night. I check all, all this area, fill up my water bottles, do all this, the sort of little maintenance thing, my little cuts. I take care of them. If you guys have noticed, a zombie has yet to attack me too. The injuries that I've had are just from like running into bushes and that sort of thing. I, I, my character is slowly starting to get tired, but I'm, I want to really um, get the car so I can go to the bridge and rest up in the area. So I'm pushing him a little bit. He's barely drowsy right now. He's not really tired right, right here. So here I find a car. I check the, the, um, the, the mechanics of it, like I had mentioned earlier, you want to make sure it has a decent muffler and a decent engine so it's not making a ton of noise when you go over to the shooting range and attracting all those zombies. So here we fill up the gas, we start putting some stuff in the back, we turn it on, and I hit. I think I head over to the bridge soon after this for my resting spot. I start transferring some of those things, that the, mainly the food, I always transfer to the glove box so that it's quick and available for me to grab there and I'm not having to switch it out every time I switch one of the seats or take stuff out of the seats and like like i mentioned I, I park my window that's closest to me along the bridge like i mentioned in, in the planning out phase earlier zombies rarely ever come to that bridge but I, i've had one or two come in in the night when i'm sleeping and just because i have my window towards the bridge and protecting me they never end up seem to get at me here i drop my backpack there outside that has the sledgehammer i was already uh, preparing my backpack as well so that I would have that one and be able to grab the sledgehammer right away. I take a couple of the zombies out that are nearby here. I even check um, around the corner before I even start destroying this. I come outside really quick to put the sledgehammer back into the backpack. I put the backpack away in the car. And that gives me enough time to let more zombies that may have heard me when I was taking down the, the door and the fenced uh, gate. To see if more zombies came so we start looting everything start grabbing everything i sometimes even just leave the the big rifles because i think the rifles are more of a multiplayer thing they the clip sizes are only three and they make a lot of noise it's not like the shotgun where you can with the pump shotgun you can put six shotgun shells into the sh shotgun and it's hitting three or four zombies at the same time. The sniper rifles only hit one zombie at a time and their clip size is one and they make just as much noise as the shotgun. So they're a lot less effective in killing zombies. That's why a lot of the times if the, the sniper rifle doesn't have the clip already, then I'll just leave it there and I won't even grab it right from the start. Here we cut out the traveling time and we start back again at the hunting lounge the reason i cut the tra traveling time is that there's obviously not much exciting stuff to see but along the way when you're traveling there if you do see cob zombies you want to stop over and kill them the reason for is they may have holsters that obviously are going to be really helpful when using our guns later on our pistols 
when you go into the haunting lounge you want to check the back area and the lockers the lockers obviously again a good chance for you to find guns or backpacks the two gun lockers in the back most of the time give me only like one or two boxes of ammo but that's still really helpful because you know if it ends up being the shotgun then those are the boxes of shotgun shells that help us level up most of the time i don't have a problem like i said before too in the in the planning out phase that you 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 end up having plenty of shotgun shells like it's never a shortage for you to get bare minimum level six most of the time i even have enough shotgun shells to get to level seven but zombies is actually what i'm lock lacking to not be able to, to get to level seven here again same thing we tr try not to grab all the radios there's quite a bit of radios here a lot of the times we just grab the attachments the the ammo um is mainly the most important thing that we're grabbing remember like i mentioned if there's starting to be too many zombies to be able to check those little shelves on the outside then don't really worry about it there i managed to sneak in and grab grab the the, the two boxes that were there one of them was was again a box of shotgun shells so that was helpful i think in this run through i ended up having about like 14 boxes of shotgun shells here we start um, organizing our inventory again i'm making one backpack so that i just grab one backpack when i get to the storage area hop in and i'm i'm driving around a little bit just by myself time as i'm organizing my backpack so we can just literally bring that backpack and i'll have everything we need i'll have the shotgun it'll have the shotgun shells it'll have a pistol so in case there's one or two zombies that are off by themselves you don't want to be wasting the shotgun shells but you can still level up you're aiming usually i use the 44 magnum bullets and the magnum to kill the, the zombies that are by themselves either inside or outside because those aren't really all that great um, they make a ton of noise and they aren't like the most effective um, revolver you, you usually want to be using the m36 it is the quietest revolver and it's still pretty much one shot zombies even from level six every once in a while it won't but it, it's a lot more effective than using the the magnum it, that, that's a lot more louder it's kind of like again like i was mentioning with the rifles it, it, it doesn't punch enough power for what it does it, it kills one zombie but it attracts a whole bunch more whereas the m36 will kill one zombie and it might like attract one zombie and then you just like reload and kill the next zombies that are coming over here's where i said like it gets a little bit dangerous when you're killing the zombies inside but you definitely want to cl clear obviously inside so you can have a really secure place to rest and what i'm doing here is i'm grouping up even the zombies so that i hit three or four um as we're kiting them around and we're still leveling up a good amount of our shotgun level i even like i said brought one of the pistols and every once in a while i would switch over to my pistol there was actually one really annoying zombie lady that would not go down i literally spent about like 12 magnum bullets and this is where i said like the magnum ends up being like really really bad i would hit the zombie and it just wouldn't kill her for some reason i hit her like three or four times before she finally died with the magnum so i don't know if it was my character just being completely exhausted or what but she was barely resilient here is that late zombie lady i was telling you about that really ended up giving me a lot of trouble when we finally end up taking her down i still check all the storage areas make sure there's no zombies inside really quick so that we're completely safe like i mentioned before inside the office you can grab one of the chairs which i think i end up doing and i put inside the bathroom so that i can sleep in safely the zombies a lot of the time will break the window so it's not completely safe to just send the chair outside you want to take the chair inside the bathroom and sleep in there or um if I, I don't think this time i didn't get lucky and have one of the storage areas that had like a mattress or couch and i really then wasn't looking for it i already had my plan of going inside the bathroom and now we just start shooting all the zombies we start using our ammo if you noticed i even start using the magnum again first the reason being is the magnum like as i said starts making some noise if you guys see it always it's it is already gathering some of the zombies a lot of the zombies around outside the gate so we just once they start gathering then we start using the shotgun shell so we hit three or four and we get a lot more experience from each shotgun shell if, if you see i'm walking around and i'm spreading out where the zombies die when i kill them with the shotgun shelf the reason for this is once we're done doing all this if you pile up a whole bunch of zombies in one particular location it can take you a while to look through all the bodies and after after you're done killing them i do look through all the bodies for stuff that you we may be missing if you notice here i still don't have a holster so i end up actually finding a single holster but it, it makes it a whole lot easier to spread out the zombies a little bit so you're not making one big pile and then you have a, a, a much easier time looking through the zombies for the stuff that they may end up dropping behind i think towards the end we ended up getting like two hand axes 
um, a couple digital watches that we can later disassemble, disassemble to level up the electronics. If you guys see here, I'm, I'm leaving up the skills so you see how it's leveling up. Right now we're about level five and a half and we still have a whole bunch of shotgun shells. Um, I go back and I grab some of the magnums just to keep killing them and keep spreading them out a little bit. There's times that you'll see it too. I jump outside the fence to bring the zombies closer to me. Like I said, you want to spread them out as much as possible just to make it easier to loot once once you're done killing them all. Um, there's not much to it. You just always want to make sure that you're hitting three or four. Even if you're not killing the zombies, the fact that you're just hitting them with ammo helps you gain the experience. And, and you can be extremely panicked and you'll still hit three or four of them the, with, with the shotgun. The only thing that, sh that that's preventing you is from actually killing them quicker because you're so panicked. But I, and I did find a couple beta blockers, but I didn't want to use the beta blockers as we're doing this because, like I said, you still hit the, the zombie and you're still gaining experience. I'd rather save the beta blockers for when we're outside a secure area like this and we have to use the beta blockers in a more efficient way with, one, with the, like the M36. Uh, a lot of the times you'll find a holster too, not just on these zombies, but as you're looting um the police stations you know the gun stores um once i'm done doing all this i usually go tr try to trade in the car that i have because it's a small quiet car i want to grab one of the bigger cars usually the car and i go and do that at the mall the mall a lot of the times will either have an ambulance one of the carpentry vans or the mail mail vans currently those are the three type of vans they have the six seat and they have the huge storage area in the back. And in my opinion, they're the best type of vehicle to have when you're trying to carry a whole bunch of weight around with you. And as we're looting all these locations, you know, besides the ones that we've already looted, um, we start getting a whole bunch of loot that we can't bring in one of the small cars. So having the six seats, obviously you're sitting in one and then you have the five extra seats, which give you a hundred um, about spots to loot unless you find one of the military backpacks you can still just drop the whole military backpack full of items and everything onto one of the seats so if you end up you know finding like five military backpacks you know you get super lucky then you're carrying 150 weight in the seats and then you still have about like 80 to 90 on, on the trunk space as well so you're literally carrying about like 240 in loot you can carry a whole bunch of stuff you know go back to to west point loot the, the library there, if, if you really want to play it risky and you want to go to the mall, you can go inside the mall and loot the library there, the hardware stores, you know, check for the military backpacks inside the the mall. Besides, you know, just changing the, ambu the to, to the ambulance if you do end up finding one. I personally like the ambulance the most because the carpentry van and the mail truck, when you're backing up, they make the backing up noise. And although those trucks are usually fairly loud, when you, a lot of the times when you find an ambulance, it's in really good condition. So it's actually, it's engine and it's muffler aren't going to make a ton of noise. So if you can always avoid drawing the least amount of zombies with you, you definitely want to do that. And if you don't have to grab the carpentry van, by being able to grab the ambulance, then you definitely want to do that so that when you're backing up, you're not pulling in more zombies towards you now here i jump out a little bit starts lagging i apologize about that i don't know why, why it's lagging and we just start killing the zombies just to spread them out just because mainly all throughout the fences we've used the fences as much as we can as far as like laying bodies down we leveled up our aiming skill so we're actually starting to hit a whole bunch of them i start getting a little bit tired so i start playing a little bit risky but that i, I end up happy hopping back in and just end up killing the zombies from from, from the inside as well so um, after I'm done going to the mall and, and exchanging my car for a, a bigger car, you can either go back to, to West Point and I'll probably leave that for the next video as far as like the next um, step that you can do because you can, as, as you'll see here, I'm very close to level 7 and like I said before, I started running out of zombies to kill where I wish I had more zombies here to actually be able to to go to level seven because I ended up having like three or four boxes of shotgun shells even throughout all this where I was even using some of the shotgun shells just to kill like one or two zombies at a time just because my character was getting so tired and I wanted to guarantee the kill with, with the shotgun shell but I easily could have saved those shotgun shells for the next location. There's a really good spot in Rosewood. Like I said, I'll go over in the next video and show you guys how to do that. We, we will need a car or two to block off the entrance in the construction yard. In, in Rosewood, but I'll go into full details and show you guys if this character ends up ends up surviving that lot that 
that long. Most of the time I'm able to do this walkthrough and get to this point where I'm, you know, close to level seven, um, about like 50% of the time. The, the difficult part comes after this when we're trying to get the, change the ambulance or go inside the, the mall and find the military backpacks on, in, inside the mall and just doing dangerous stuff like that, going back into West Point, one of the, th the other strategies that I like to do is, if you guys noticed, uh, or maybe you didn't because it's super fast forward, but I do read some of the um, a noted, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, a noted maps where people, you know, other like survivors, you know, that are pretending to be in the game, they write down notes because those will tell you where the boarded up houses are in each town. And I save those so then we can go to the boarded up houses. And a lot of the times, as you guys know, the boarded up houses will have a lot of more ammo in them. So since we're already at West Point, we might as well hit those houses up now. And we might as well hit the, the key spots that we want to loot, like um, the the bookstore that they have downtown, the, the Gigamart. And like I said, when you switch over to the ambulance, you have all that storage space to be able to grab those stuff back and you also want to hit up the boarded houses and grabbing the maps will help out a whole lot with that here now we just start looting all all the zombies you know go a little bit at a time making sure we're not missing any one of the zombies like i said i do end up getting a single holster so unfortunately i didn't find a, um, a double holster i think i ended up killing about five, um four or five cops so um only two had a holster and then like three of them didn't have any holster at all so i got a little bit unlucky there i mean it's not very common that you see the double holster but eventually you do you do end up getting it as you're doing all this i think that's going to do it about for this video guys there's not much that you know there's left to see you know i'm just continuously looting looting the zombies here there's, there's not other many pointers that i can give at this point from this point on like i said there's many different things that you can do you can rush to even get to like level seven or level eight by going to the warehouses the large warehouses between this location and, and Rosewood or going up, up to um, all the other towns and going to their police stations, going through the towns and looking up the board houses. There's, you can definitely go from anywhere else, but even getting to like level six and been, getting very close to level seven will help you out a lot to be able to use your guns. And the one that I said that I highly recommend the most is the M36, just because it is the quietest and at these high, high levels, it's going to kill zombies most of the time. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time. Bye-bye.